If the transaction is successful or the run is successful, then we will move on to get transaction data. We have right now with us what? Transaction data which is, which is a data table and it will contain the input file that we have to process. Okay, if I just open this particular input file, this is what we have in our data table. Okay, so this particular state starts with, as you can read over here, it retrieves a new transaction data to be processed. Transaction number, it uses a variable called transaction number and it as it is incremented it will so as I have already told it acts as a gateway that will take us to the next transaction and the next transaction so that we can process all the transactions that we have in our input okay it begins with check stop signal this is an activity which is linked with orchestrator so right now we haven't uh, gone through orchestrator so we can leave it I will try to just give it an example okay there is a option in orchestrator from where you can soft stop it okay this variable will be assigned a value true if you are trying to stop it from the orchestrator so if it's true then we'll go through this process and you will log in something called stopping process requested and you will take you will assign transaction item is equal to nothing so it will directly go see if tra new transaction is having some data it will proceed to the process transaction state else if there is no data it will end let's see what's happening here if there is so uh, someone has requested for a stop so if I just click on this if transaction data is not nothing it's going to process transaction if it's nothing it's going to end process so as you can see if someone has requested that it will have the transaction data the transaction data as you can see here transaction items data is nothing so it will go here and it will end the process so this is what actually happens okay this will also actually happens when we are done with all the data that we have in the input and there is no data to process further in that case also will be directed towards the end process and we will close the process from executing what in case there is no instruction from the user okay we'll go to the else part of it and here we already have XAML with us which comes along with the framework if I just open that okay first what are the inputs that we are passing to it we are passing a transaction number which is of type int and a config file that we have in which we have all the data and we are getting out some value called transaction item okay and we are passing on something out okay which is transaction data these things are not that much important you can ignore them for right now okay so this were the fields if you can see the value of transaction number is initialized to one okay because i will let you know about it okay if i just open this particular xaml here there's a lot of data written over here that you can go through okay see right now it comes defaultly with something called this get transaction item if you are working with orchestrator it is of any use else you can delete it for right now okay then out transaction what is out transaction here if I just go through it we are getting some transaction number which is one this transaction number will be incremented every time so first it's one then it's two then it's three then it's four then it's five then it's six seven eight nine ten and then 
with the help of that we'll be able to terminate the process okay keeping in mind that into a mind so what we will do is our output transaction item we'll just remove this okay we'll replace it with our logic so what is there is in transaction number okay if in transaction number is less than or equal to our data table what is our data table our data table is in transaction data io transaction table so this will contain our data table by that i mean this particular information data table dot rows dot count will give me the number of entries available in this particular data table so what i'm telling to the code here is the transaction number for the first time this will be one one is less than or equal to this particular count which is 10 right here okay so one is less than or equal to 10 so it will go inside this here okay here what i'm going to do is into this particular instead of this what i will do is i'm going to drag an activity set this and i'll assign a value to it which is out transaction item see suppose there is a data table and this every row is a data row okay every time we go through data table we iterate over there it will be data row keeping in mind what we will say is output transaction item okay for the first iteration will be io transaction dot rows of let me do it right here so that it will be visible to you okay whatever we have called in transaction number minus one what does this mean what we are telling the code to do is in our data table okay and this get me the row which row the first row because the result of this will be because in transaction number is one 1 minus 1 will be 0 though we can see this thing starts from this okay but so uh, when it comes to data table it will be uh, this particular first row will be ignored because this is columns so this will start from 1 2 3 4 the numbering of this will be 1 sorry the numbering of this will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 right but in data table the index starts from 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 fine so we will we'll have only 9 0 to 9 in this case here data table dot rows of 0 okay the next time the in transaction number is incremented by 1 it will be 2 minus 1 so as we go over here next time it will try to pick this particular row and then this and then this hope you understand it fine so by now i can click on ok it's a good practice to give the name of the variable here that's done there is an error here it's saying you can't assign a data row value to q item we have to change this to data row for that i'm changing it 
the error has gone I'm saving it these are of no use to us so I'm trying to delete it that's done okay so for the first time we will have the first row in our output transaction item let's go back to the main file from where we are invoking this here also in variables we have to change this to data row once that is done I'll click on import transaction thing and here I'll give transaction item again now it's done so because this time we will have some data in this let me show you the data that comes along with it and we have some data in it okay uh, let's say because uh, we have the transaction value the first transaction value in transaction item dot its name right name to string and then uh, let's fetch the email address also of John just copy this I'm here just trying to show you how we were able to go to that particular value sorry here it's email fine so in this case we'll be only getting the first one because we have not yet done the work so that it will be going through the all items over here there's an error let's see what's happening okay here also we have to change it Okay, it's gone let's go back and see there is still an error okay here because there is a okay uh, for, for now I'm just disabling it so that I will no longer see that particular error and I still have the error okay fine here also we have to do the same I'm disabling this flow too fine there is no error right now let's see that I'm validating the file and there are no errors okay as we have done last time we have tried to debug that right so that is the similar thing that we are going to do right now I will just place a breakpoint right here fine so let me run it I'm just closing this file don't save I'm deleting this okay I'll try to run it once do remember that we have to click on debug It is trying to launch it it will try to download it it has closed the pop-up it is showing us the details of the input okay now now we have just reached the get transaction data state step into the default value of this will be false because we don't have any connected our connection with the orchestrator it will be false so we'll be directed towards the else part here we are we are trying to go into it and here it has gone into it because this turns to be true this particular condition 
step into and this time we have the value of that and see there was an error column name doesn't exist fine here it's first name rather than first name I have given name so it has failed there no problem I will recorrect it stop this paste it try to run it once again you can remove this so that it will not highlight it every time if you want you can just check that Okay, fine. We have got the input displayed. Let's minimize it. Okay, we have stopped here. I'm just clicking on step into. It has reached here. We are going from get transaction data to main again. Then step into. Here we have got the value John and then his mail ID. So that particular transaction item had this particular details in it because this is the first iteration it has the first uh, rows details and as it passes from this to this and then back into this it will pick the second details third details and fourth details we'll be looking at it soon